Look how they butchered my boy. And by them, I mean the people who used to watch Jordan Peterson. Yes. And by butchered my boy, I mean stopped watching him. Uh, in fact, I could go so far as to say, look how irrelevance has butchered my boy. You know, I never was a big fanboy of Jordan Peterson, but I used to watch his stuff. I used to like him, especially his idea of uh, monsters. And I could go very far and wide to explain why I liked some of his ideas. But the main thing I liked was how he explained the ambiguity of the human being which is every human being has a bit of a monster in him. And that's not necessarily something we can or even should extinguish. It, it's, it's in fact something that gives us strength in times of need. Uh, but there was something that I was always um, reticent about in terms of Jordan Peterson. And that something is his ambiguity, once again. Funny, isn't it? I like his idea of uh, describing human beings as ambiguous, but I dislike his personal ambiguity. But his ambiguity is quite different from the ambiguity of good slash evil in humanity. His ambiguity is an ambiguity in which you give yourself space to maneuver out of every single argument. Yes, indeed. Jordan Peterson never made complete arguments from point one to point a hundred. He always gave himself enough room to uh, go a few steps back and say, no, what I actually meant was the exact opposite of what I used to say. Now, you might remember how Jordan Peterson became popular. I certainly do. He became popular because he started um, denouncing and opposing the idea of pronouns in colleges and schools in Canada. Um, now, in Canada overall, in the West, not only in Canada, and overall, the whole West is an idea that still persists to an, to an extent, even though it's quite irrelevant. Now, because this idea is irrelevant, it kind of gives you a hint why Jordan Peterson has become more irrelevant. The things he was focusing on never really became that important to begin with. The overall uh, fear that, oh, everybody's going to become trans, everybody's going to cut their genitalia apart and start calling each other with a million different names, it just didn't come to pass. Yeah, sure, there's more people with time who identify themselves with these things, but uh, numbers are still minuscule. Absolutely minuscule. In Armageddon never happened, and it's never going to happen, because just like many other trends, it's just a trend and it's going to go into obscurity very soon but let's not waffle about this situation any longer what am i talking about today jordan peterson on ukraine of course just like chomsky we'll go very quick over what he said in a little interview that i will try to link in the description over there so jordan peterson I'll, I'll focus on one particular thing he said he said that you can't beat someone who you can't say no to or something of the sort now, Europe has said no to Putin, and the West has said no to Putin plenty of times. Putin said, stop supplying Ukraine with weapons. The West said, no, we won't stop supplying Ukraine with weapons. And there are many other things in which the West has uh, taken a uh, complete and strong standpoint against Russia. Now, did Russia take a standpoint against the West? Absolutely, Russia did take a standpoint against the West, except that Russia has a lot less means to back that standpoint. Let's examine the balance of power. What does Russia have left? Energy, sure, Russia can still do a little bit of blackmail with energy, but not much. Putin has played his card. Europe has enough energy reserves to last through the winter. And sure, some countries are better than others in that. The UK, for example, is going to go through a little bit of a tough time, especially because Brexit, sorry, Brexit years, it, it's, was it, it, what, is what it is, kind of. I mean, with the possibility of the UK being in the EU, there would have been uh, agreements made with France and Germany and some other countries that have made, that have a lot more reserves of energy for the winter, for the UK to have an easier time. But alas, we'll have to make do with what we have. Um, and Jordan Peterson also said uh, a few other quite interesting things in this little interview. Once again, he hasn't really committed himself to a point clearly. He claimed that the way Putin is going to claim victory, oh, this is, this is my favorite actually, he called the notion that Russia is going to lose the war naive. Hmm. 
That's an interesting one, isn't it? Naive to claim that Russia will lose the war, that Russia is clearly losing, and that Russia has practically nothing to gain with at this point, or ever, at any point at all. I mean, Russia would win this war if the West did nothing about it, just like in 2014. So I can't completely uh, blame Putin on foolishness for thinking that nothing would happen, but I can still blame him quite a lot. Now, it's not naive. It is realistic to see that Russia is going to lose this war, because Russia is losing this war. What is also possible, however, is that Russia is going to make the situation as uncomfortable as humanly possible for everybody involved. And Jordan Peterson said that Putin is going to try to spin uh, the destruction of uh, eastern and central Ukraine. I mean, it didn't say eastern and central, it said of Ukraine. Ukraine is a huge country. There's been a lot of destruction, but that destruction has remained mainly localized to eastern and central Ukraine. Some destruction happened in western regions like Lviv, for example, but many regions, like my region, Chernivtsi, has suffered practically no destruction, practically no casualties from many bombings. Why? Well, because it's far away from the front, and Ukraine is a huge country, and Russia can simply not... Uh, bomb the whole country of Ukraine. Now, once again, how can Russia claim victory in this situation if the Russian population itself doesn't want to be part of this victory? If the Russian population itself is trying to flee the country that Putin also wants to claim victory for, supposedly for Russia, but actually for his own ambition. Which is why, to begin with, that the Russians are indeed fleeing the country. So, I will say to jo Mr. Jordan Peterson, although he will never hear this, unfortunately, Jordan Peterson, stick to the pronouns. Thank you very much for watching, and, you know, hopefully I can continue these uh, little videos, because uh, it's quite fun, and I think it's going to be pretty informative for some people who are listening to these uh, uh, popular speakers like Chomsky and Peterson, and hear why uh, they should be taken with a grain of salt. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you very much for watching what, uh, once again, and <clears throat> you can also find me in Speakers Corner or here in the channel. Anyway, see you next time because my voice is really failing me right now. Bye-bye.